So this particular research paper is called Dialogue Reason Rule-Based RL Sparks Dialogue Reasoning in LLMs. Uh, and it's put out by StepFun, and then it's they have the model hosted on Hugging Face. Uh, and then, so if you go to the model, it's a fine-tuned Quinn 2.5, uh, 32 billion parameter model. So it's a very big model, 32 billion parameters. Uh, I don't have anything capable of hosting uh, this model, just like inference on the fly, 32, <laughs> it's, it's pretty large. Uh, overall, but so the, the research paper is um, interesting, and there's a lot of interesting things about the research paper, uh, and then it reminds me of uh, and makes me think of further discussion around this topic. So that's kind of what I'll do with this particular uh, video. So diving into the research paper itself, they propose a dialogue reason, which is a reasoning paradigm that uncovers the lost roles in monologue style reasoning models aiming to boost diversity and coherency of the reasoning process. Diving deeper into that, exactly what they mean and what they're doing within that, uh, it's pretty simplistic what they mean overall, right? So like um, chain of thought, anything that is regarding um, like the reasoning models, it's all um, like a monologue and it's all like an internal monologue that goes on within the model. And you can see it, like if you play around with any like Gemini, ChatGPT, et cetera, and you look at the thinking that's going on, like you can see the thinking that's going on, right? And it's a, a monologue process. Like I need to do step one, step two, step three, et cetera. Um, and then, so monologues are, are good, but there's different types of, uh, of reasoning, of like dialogue-based reasoning. Um, and then like, um, on, so beyond monologue, you have dialogue-based, which would be like, like um, I look at it and think of it as like the Socratic method, pretty much, where essentially, rather than just having like um, one person or one model talk to itself, in this instance, what you do is, what the Socratic method is, the model and it's the interesting thing within this, and we'll dive deeper into this, is you're utilizing the same model, but you split the model into, uh, we'll call it different personalities, different uh, model types. <laughs> like, think of it like um, if it's the Socratic method, then you split one into Socrates and one into Plato, uh, and then you have uh, discussions back and forth, or, or one into to Socrates and one into Aristotle, and then it's, you know, uh, here's the the um, discussions that, that you have. And then so interesting dynamics uh, overall as to uh, how this uh, particular framework works, right? And, and then that's uh, where I want to spend some, some time within that because it's interesting to me because essentially at the end of the day, you're making up a lot of this, right? Like the difference between a uh, monologue and a dialogue and, and a Socratic method in this instance, it's like, to me, um, there's a, a layer of uh, like, um, like, abstractness that that you're putting into that up front within that like just you know like we're kind of making <laughs> making up differences between monologue and dialogue uh but then step two is is that we're making up a huge difference because like the model isn't actually like being split into these different models right it's not like we're taking like socrates and, and aristotle we're taking <laughs> model a and then splitting it into model a and model b uh but it's still model a at the end of the day it's just you know it's treated differently <laughs> like it's, it's you know to uh call it different personalities like uh and then so the, the the dialogue between those uh personalities ends up in this instance and, and within these models being able to train the model better than monologue based reasoning and that's a like i mean the the uh full breakdown of this research paper right they they fine-tune a model on this they call it like um di like divergent then to convergent thinking which they talk about which solves a big problem within these models where the models cloud like especially with the the the, the, the monologue based thinking where they go like uh, off track right and then so uh within this they say it, it improves reasoning diversity as well as reasoning coherency <laughs> and then if you've ever taken a uh, logic course at all uh there's a lot of mathematics associated with this because they they break it down into uh pure logic right and then so pure logic is, is pure math um and then so uh they have their compound qa task definition where they like uh, define exactly uh, how the framework works uh and then they break down their results of it um and then this is kind of a, a breakdown of the math right and then like what exactly is going on here so you ask a question and then you have a reasoning model that thinks for for an answer and then it's kind of going and trying to search for the uh ground truth uh and then it can do this via uh either a singular or multiple different tasks and compound tasks and then so they provide the mathematical
technical framework for both, um, as well as the results here. And then the results show that essentially the model performs like uh, better and better the more that they tune it on this particular method. Um, and then so uh, they solve essentially via their analysis the inability to deepen reasoning or attention deficit within like this monologue monologue models. They they pay a lot of attention to that that like what they call the attention deficit where the model doesn't very really, like does, doesn't like dive deep into a problem like the, the the model will dive deeper into a problem that it's thinking about with this particular method second is like only answering the first question which is big within models uh and then hard to balance coherency and diversity uh and then like the model's just you know going off track and then just going like completely kind of like more randomized um and then so the the this method shows that they they solve for like a, a multiplicity of those problems that come up via uh, kind of like this model based reasoning approach, right? And then they uh, have different they, they they break it down into different dimensions. So they have an agent dimension, an environment dimension, and an interaction dimension. Agent dimension defines the number of reasoning agents, their designated characters, objectives, and the interests that they represent. The environment dimension specifies environmental functionalities, such as reporting and adjusting task progression, introducing emergent events, and maintaining overall task control. And an interaction dimension, which is agent-to-agent -agent interactions, includes control, uh, conflict resolution, negotiation, supplementation, and prompting among agents represented via linguistic dialogues and agent to agent interactions, which involves agents expressing requirements to the environment and the environment providing feedback to agents, thereby dynamically adjusting task goals and agent characters. I really like the way that they frame this out with these uh, concepts being broken out into different dimensional concepts, right? So agent dimension, environment dimension, and interaction dimension. Uh, as I've kind of discussed on my channel before, there's a schism within uh, AI overall, when it comes to this very specifically, like environmental interaction, you have people on one side of the schism, like Jan LeCun, for example, that say that we will never reach AGI with current architectures because of the fact that models never explicitly interact with their environment. Uh, whereas to me, and like the, especially with breakdowns like this, what it shows is that models 100% do interact with a environment. They don't interact with our environment necessarily, but that doesn't mean that they're not interacting with a environment, period, an environment. There is an environmental interaction that occurs here, and that environmental interaction is based off of dimensionality, just like it would off of any other physical concept. In this instance, the dimensionality is agents, environments, and the interaction itself, which again is modeled, uh, some could say, off of the physics of the actual you know, of, of physical interactions and, and environments. Like this would be common that I would see in um, a lot of like postmodern philosophy, which is why this doesn't, you know, like shock me <laughs> overall, this uh, seeing this type of framing. Uh, and then they dive more into the math because that's what people do within this, right? They, they, you know, and, and it's a research paper, academic research paper. So uh, formalizing this rule-based reinforcement training uh, to adopt the dialogue patterns and then the results from that. And then just more and more, it's just uh, all of the, the mathematics and then their results from this uh, particular training method that they put out, right? And that's essentially the research paper here. Um, and then that's the, the full 15 pages. They also released the model. Um, it's a 32 billion parameter model. Again, it's big. And so it's only been downloaded six times so far because <laughs> it's it's big. Um, and then so if you want to make yourself uh, lucky number seven, you can you can go at it and download the, the model uh, Quen 2.5 32B Dialogue Reason. And then uh, here, let's play around with their framework, right? I like to do this, and then their frame, as I mentioned at the top of the video, their framework reminds me of another uh, kind of concept related to reasoning and these models that I want to touch on um, within this video before the end. So I'll touch on that. I'll showcase first the framework that they showcase in the research paper, then I'll showcase the, re the framework that um, this inspired me to think about, um, and then so I, I broke it down and uh, for you so you can see that there, and then I'll, I'll talk about that further. So, uh, first of all, this Jupyter Notebook provides a Python-based conceptual implementation for two distinct AI and machine learning frameworks. The first one we're going to cover is the Dialogue Reason Framework Conceptualization, which is very specifically related to the research paper that we've been looking at. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Let me fix that. Uh, and then so uh, this section demonstrates how multiple AI agents, each with a defined role, can collaborate through dialogue to solve complex problems. And the core components are the LLM integration, the agent class, the dialogue environment class, and the dialogue manager class. 
uh, as far as functionality, the framework simulates a collaborative problem solving process where different expert agents, again, this is all the same model, right? Discuss a given problem. The interaction is guided by a system prompt and the aim is to often produce a consolidated answer potentially in a specified format. Uh, in this instance, the model's not gonna do a very good job because I'm using a very, very, very small model, uh, but it gets the job done. Uh, and then the second framework, I'll talk about this, this second framework here, but let's talk about the first framework here first, right? And, and just dive deeper into this. So up front, I'm utilizing this model, this uh, Eleuther AI GPT Neo 125 million parameter. So it's like it's a 125 million parameter model. Uh, when I test it out, it doesn't end up doing anything that I needed to do uh, within these particular tests, but it, it does, you know, it works, it does stuff. Um, and then so uh, it allows us also to to view this particular framework, right? And then so within this framework, essentially, it's we're taking this model um, and then we're building out, a, I'll call it like a Socratic method around the model, right? Um, so this is this first part is all, all regards for its token, token uh, like like a, uh, like uh, formatting for the model. And then we have like uh, here's where we actually define the agent. And then so uh, in this instance, we're defining the model to to like prompt itself, right? Uh, and then it kind of uh, deleted something there. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll fix that there. Um, but so uh, within this, uh, uh, essentially, like uh, we have the model going through, and then like uh, being its own Socratic agent in this instance, right? So based on the dialogue in your role, what's the next line in this play to help solve the problem? So we give it a current scenario, a dialogue, and we tell it that it's it's in a play, essentially, right? Is is how I, I frame this, uh, and I kind of deleted uh, some of that by accident. So I'll fix. I'll come back through uh, and fix that. We can take a look at the the main output here. Here's the the main execution. Uh, this is a play where expert characters collaborate through dialogue to solve a given problem. Each character should stay in their role. The dialogue should progress towards a solution. The final answer should be in a boxed format uh, by one of the agents. And then, so, uh, like, uh, the user problem is, what are the main challenges in developing truly general AI? And then, so, the goal would be, in this instance, to initialize the agents within their role. So, I have a doctor architect, a professor cognita, Dr. Algo and a synthesizer AI, and they're all different personality types that are invoked via the same model, right? Um, and then so the Dr. Architect is a seasoned AI systems architect focused on practical design and integration challenges. Professor Cognita is a philosopher specializing in consciousness, understanding, and the nature of intelligence. Dr. Algo is a machine learning researcher focused on current algorithms, data limitations, and learning theories. And Synthesizer AI is an AI task with listening to the discussion and formulating the comprehensive final answer. Uh, and then so all of these units just come together. And then again, <laughs> they're all the same model, um, just you know breaking it down. And then they uh, go through. And then this uh, kind of script plays out, this uh, dialogue here. So you have the current scene as to like uh, what they're discussing. Um, and then so they go through through and then they're supposed to follow up with questions and then you get all of the uh, end results and all of the feedback here. But again, we're playing around with a very small 125 million parameter model and then feeding it all of this. Didn't go very well with our very, very small model. Uh, and then it gave the same output every time, which is again, like that's 100% expected within this because that's, you know, just <laughs> kind of how this, this breaks down and works. So like nothing unexpected there. Um, and then so this reminds me, right? Like, uh, so as I'm playing around with this and I'm, I'm thinking of this, like the bottom line to me is like, there's a lot of stuff that we're just like flat out making up <laughs> within this, right? Like, uh, and then, so this comes down to like reasoning overall and then like, well, what exactly is reasoning? And then, so to me, when I think about these things and I, I look at these things overall, I think that a lot of people have, uh, kind of, they put, like reasoning overall on like a higher scale than it is like um to me it's very simplistic like we can see here that reasoning can be broken down into complex mathematical equations but uh can be broken down into a mathematical and logical structure uh, that we can then feed into a computer algorithm and that algorithm is then able to replicate exactly on every level what we would call reasoning right and then we're, we're looking at it and uh within this um and then within that like how exactly and why exactly does that work overall right like to me it's interesting to me like the, this whole entire thing right like, like let's take the example of this socratic method that we're doing within this where 
taking this model and then we're just saying, hey, pretend that you're like three different personalities or four different personalities. And then all of a sudden that improves the model performance, like for whatever reason, because it just is, is able to pretend its way through it. Right. Like where, like why, where, how does that happen? I don't know. And then so that's what leads me to this second demonstration here is this same type of concept. And then so uh, the very first time that I ran into this concept was within a uh, demonstration like this, right? And then so I call this iterative pseudo labeling and a distillation framework. And then so the purpose of this second uh, no, uh, like frame is to demonstrate cell is to demonstrate a common technique in semi-supervised learning and model improvement where a model iteratively learns from its own predictions. This is often referred to as a self-training or pseudo-labeling with an added element of model distillation if the student model architecture or training process is simplified and or guided by the teacher. So very specifically in this instance what I'm doing is the model is uh, making a prediction on something and then that model that prediction the uh, confidence of that prediction is measured via hemming distance and then like the uh, like more confident portions of the model's prediction are kept like the, the higher hemming distance is kept the lower hemming distance is thrown out <laughs> and that's arbitrary uh, and then we just essentially and then we train the model on the high hemming distance right um, and then like the hemming distance represents our our confidence score and then so we only train the model like the student model on like high confidence and then we do that and then we train another model on that same data and we go through that same exact process but it's all this closed loop right nothing new is getting introduced we're just like having each student um trained on the prior teachers uh, outputs like it's it's predictions but only it's best predictions and then we just throw out everything else and then within that closed loop by just doing that right it dramatically increases the performance of the predictions of the model um, and that's what we get here as the end result right and then so a lot of this is assimilated but, but I mean all of this is assimilated overall right but then so uh, what we can see here is that the the model starts off with a proficiency of uh, we call it 0.6 according to our Hamming distance here um, and then it jumps up after the second student iteration to a proficiency of 0.98 like almost 100% proficient right um, and then just like uh, after just a few like essentially two generations is is when that occurs um, and and where we're able to jump the actual predictions and, and functionality of this model of this closed system just based off of training it off of its own predictions is like uh it's uh, to me it's overall interesting right because again like it's the same type of concept where it's a lot of it is just largely imaginary like the first in the first concept we're just taking that model and we're saying hey you're you're now like multiple agents right be you're a doctor of this, you're a doctor of that, you're, you're an AI of this, a doctor of that, etc. right? And then you just go through and play out those roles like a play. Uh, in this instance, we're just saying, hey, like, uh, we're taking the imaginary distance that exists between each of your predictions, and then we're going to just fine tune, we're going to distill that, and then we're just going to throw that in a student model, and we're just going to train and train and train models on that until it gets really good and however that works it breaks down and like i mean here it is working right and then so to me it's kind of um at like the all of this overall begs a lot of questions and it also answers a lot of questions to me um but i'll leave it up to you as to like uh how exactly you want to reason through these things uh, i'll leave a link to the research paper here of uh dialogue reason rule-based RL Sparks dialogue reasoning in LLMs, and then I'll also leave a link to this collab notebook. Uh, and if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.